Vision Sunday was supposed to be two weekends after lockdown, and so we were ready, church. We were ready. We had everything ready, planned, and then we had to go home. We don't take kindly to going home. So now we're ready. We're going to do it again. And um, as Greg said, we're going to take the second half of this year and we are going to make it count. And I know some of you, the interesting thing about COVID, the COVID season, is that it's a little bit different to January. I think when we come back in January normally and have Vision Weekend and gear up, we've all to some degree had a bit of a rest. Now, I know some people work through January, but like our cultural feeling in New Zealand is it's a holiday season and there's lots of barbecues and there's that atmosphere, right? But over the lockdown period, everyone had a different experience. Some of you were running businesses from home. Some of you couldn't run your businesses from home. Some of you had to work from home. You had to homeschool. Some of you were completely isolated and alone with nothing in your hands because of how the situation was. And so we all come back today actually feeling quite different about how the last few months were. I don't think any of us loved it, although there might have been things that that were of benefit that you thought were worthwhile that came out of it, right? Would that be fair to say? So today, interesting that Pastor Peter said um, he hopes we have a fruitful service because we are going to talk about how to be fruitful with what happens on Vision Sunday. So this is a little bit of a campus team chat where we're going to prepare ourselves ready to, be, to hear the word from Pastor Peter that he will bring to all our campuses, that he'll bring to all our churches internationally as well for this year. And so I want us, North Shore Campus, and those of you watching on our online campus, to be ready for that word when it comes. Because some of you have been here that weekend as vision... Oh, hang on, I just want to say, pause. Um, junior high goes downstairs straight like at 10 o'clock now. So if you are here in the service and you're in junior high and you're waiting for us to release the kids, um, they are downstairs. So find someone to show you where that is. I'm trying to see if you're sm- wave to me if you need help with that. Otherwise, um, you can duck out with the youth. Sorry, just needed to say. Because they used to be in, but now they're going to start downstairs. So I was saying that fruitful, we are going to prepare and be ready to receive the word that Pastor Peter brings on Vision Sunday. I was saying that it's our birthday that weekend. And it's our 38th birthday. How cool is that? I am grateful that I'm part of a stable church that's got strong roots, roots that go deep into the ground, a foundation that holds us, right? So some of you, give me a wave if you've been here for 38 years. I know there's a couple of people. Ah, there they are. They're those two, and there may be a few others, and at our other campuses as well. You have heard a lot of vision messages, right? And then there's some of you that have literally been here 38 minutes since church started, and it's your first day. And we have prayed for you that you would come. And we are stoked that you're here to be part of what we're doing. And so that's a, that's a big different differential. Yeah, that's the word. 38 years, 38 minutes. Ah. Oh, How amazing is that? No, that's what it says, literally 38 minutes. I'm loving that. That's cool. That's good. Couldn't have made that. I couldn't have aimed for that if I tried. (laughs) Okay, so my point being, if you have heard a lot of vision messages, you could easily come next Sunday or the following and think, I've heard vision messages. Like, cool, it'll be great. I'll be here for the good day. But I've heard a lot of vision messages. It's cool. I'll just, we'll be there. Yep, cool. And if you're new, you might think, I don't know what I can do in this. I just got here. Well, The Holy Spirit is going to tell you and show you how to play your part in it. But the most important thing is that we're ready to receive it on the day and we're committed to doing something with it, no matter how many times we've heard or not heard a vision message. So over COVID-19, I just want to say, church, we are so proud of you for what you've done in this season. This was not what we had planned for this year was not what any of us had planned. And in amongst it, you were innovative, you took up the challenge, you did amazing things. And, you know, I look at what our church did, you reached out to each other. We had dozens of people that were committed to calling elderly people in our congregation right throughout the duration to make sure they weren't alone if being on the internet wasn't their thing. We had people that started new hubs. Who started a Zoom hub or went to some kind of a Zoom meeting over over that season? A lot of people. I listened to Greg teach a lot 
lot of people at home while we were in lockdown, teach a lot of people how to do Zoom so they could set up hubs. And then I heard you, because Greg was attending some of them, I heard you praying for each other on those Zoom meetings, connecting with each other. You found a way to be community. You found a way to keep um, each other going. You found a way to reach out to newer people and keep them connected to our family here. And then when we did Here to Help, you stepped up and you started bringing things. You bought your finances. You bought cooked meals. Now you bought your pajamas and your blankets. Not your pajamas, I hope, but some pajamas. <laughs> Mention that. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> That's funny. You have been absolutely epic. And even in a season that was really difficult for some of you, for your businesses, your incomes, and your family, some of your children, um, you know, were going through a lot if they were at uni or, you know, there was a lot going on. And in amongst that, you stood up as men and women of God and you provided for other people. You provided prayer, friendship, you provided finance, you provided meals. And I could not be prouder of who you are, City Impact Church. You're absolutely awesome awesome, awesome people. And in amongst that and the innovation and those beautiful things that you did, there was loss, there was void, there was loss of dreams and plans. And some of you don't even know how you're going to get those things back. Are you going to be able to have some of the things that you planned for this year? There's disappointments and the disappointments are very real. And even now, just a few weeks back into, and I don't even think we're normal yet, because it doesn't feel normal yet, does it? We're back at work and things, but we're not like pumping on full steam, are we? So we were a few weeks back, and now I think, oh my life, did that even happen? Like, was I really at home for all those weeks with five children? Did that really happen to me? Those long days. (laughs) Greg says six children. He's counting himself. Yeah, I won't comment, babe. I mean, you had your moments that you were helpful. (laughs) You know, it feels surreal, right? And so today, we're all coming back, we're stepping back into the race, but we're all feeling quite different about what's happened. And some of us have got bigger things that are still impacting us from that time. And we need to realize that as we realign ourselves and get ready for the vision, we need to understand that every person here in this room and the the families that you represent and those that aren't here this morning, you're all coming to the start line in a different way to each other. And so we need to spend some time, as many of you are doing with your school and your university or your businesses, your jobs, you are realigning, you're regathering, you're bringing it back together, right? And so that's what we need to do as a church as well. So we've got to get our focus back and sharpen our vision and get our aim straight because we want to be active, have momentum and get moving. And our senior pastor is going to bring fresh direction and fresh vision. So why does vision matter? Because what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. A few years ago, Pastor Phil, oh no, sorry, just last year, wow, (laughs) that's what COVID did to us. 10 years ago at Global last year, (laughs) that's what it feels like, Pastor Phil Pringle brought um, a a word of prophecy to Greg and I, but it was for our campus and he spoke to us because we're the campus pastors, but it was for all of us that this campus would double an exponential amount of time. And so Greg and I receive that and we receive it for all of you and we need you to receive it as well because that prophecy was for the house that you're part of. And so we've got to now put our feet to that plan. We don't sit back and go, oh, that's a cool prophecy. How are you going to do that, God? We go, okay, God, that's the vision I want as well. What do I need to do? How do I start moving, make something happen? And so we are ready for the 5th of July. We're going to commit to being here, church. Commit to being here on Vision Sunday. Commit to being part of the prayer and fasting. We're going to hear the word together. We're going to receive it together. And we're going to stand in action together. So we've got a couple of weeks to prepare ourselves, ready to receive it, because we don't just want to rock up on the day and see if it impresses us or not. Because it's not about what it is, it's about what we do with what's sown into us. And if you've heard a lot of Vision Sundays, you could think, oh, well, you know, okay, that's cool, Pastor Peter, love it. But we need to come ready and say, whatever you, Pastor Peter and Bev, believe is the most important for us to focus on today, we've got it with you. We're doing it. And so the first thing that I'm asking you to think about preparing in the next couple of weeks is to awaken yourself, to awaken yourself. Some of us need to be awakened. 
Some of us felt like hibernation during COVID. It was weird. Even if we were working really hard, it it closed us in. It slowed some things down. It was a very strange feeling. And we need to awaken. Awaken means to resume because you were already doing things. We already had momentum. So we have to resume that momentum. We've got to get it moving again. We could be feeling cold, isolated, sleepy, literally and figuratively. And so it's time to say, awake my soul. We are ready. We are not stuck. We are not behind. We are not asleep. We are regrouping, realigning and ready to go. Psalm 57 says this, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake my glory. Awake, O harp and lyre. I awaken the dawn. What that is saying is that I am, I am steadfast. You are steadfast. Can you say before God, I am steadfast, God. No matter the season, no matter what's happened this year that was out of my control, the things I didn't like, the things that are frustrating me about it, regardless, I am steadfast to you, God. And I will awaken the dawn with my praises. So what that means is we're first out of the gate. Awaken the dawn. It doesn't say wake up after the dawn and then praise God. Okay? It says awaken the dawn with our praises. What we're going to do, church, is have the opportunity to be the culture setters for this new day. We are walking into a new era, a new season. That's what everyone's talking about. People are saying, right, this is a new era, post-COVID. It's a new era. So I say, how about we are the first cab off the rank? How about instead of the politicians and the media and pop culture setting what this era is going to look like and filling it full of fear and the unknown, that we awaken the dawn, that we get up first, we lift up the name of Jesus, we bring glory to His name, we begin to work worship Him. We set the spiritual water level of our nation. And you know what we lead out with in your families, in your workplace, in your businesses, in your neighbourhoods? We lead out with faith. We lead out with surety. And there is a big gap of that in the secular society. People are not sure. They do not have anything constant to stand on. We have the name of Jesus, and it is a constant. It is a constant in our lives. But... The catch is, it means we've got to get up first, which is right now. If we leave it another week, another fortnight, everyone else is beginning to come out of that hibernation. They're awaking from their slumber. We're in an in-between stage. We're not quite normal. Let's change what normal is. Let's change what normal is in New Zealand. But we have to get up first. Lead strong. Lead with the tone of a culture setter who brings kingdom principles, kingdom values, the name of Jesus, and let that sit over every area that God has positioned you in for influence. When a bear comes out of hibernation, did anyone see that cute video last week of the little bear that went, just, it went you did, Archer, cool. Uh, literally a park ranger got, had an iPhone camera and saw a bear coming up out of the snow, out of hibernation. How cool is that? When a bear comes out of hibernation, there's an internal chemistry that um, changes, and that's what wakes them up, and it begins to awaken them slowly like an alarm clock. It changes all the chemicals inside them, and it wakes them up from their slumber. And that's what we need right now, church, is that our internal alarm clock is going off, and we need to take what's internally in us and get it out, and we need to lead with it. We need to be the first up and the first awake. Interesting also that when bears are in hibernation— the junior high kids would like this, but they're not here. They um, wake a couple of times to eliminate waste. And I thought, I like that. They slightly waken to eliminate waste during the hibernation. And I know so many of you have told me how during lockdown you realized what was not important in your life and you got rid of it. You took stock of your families, you took stock of what you spend time on, we, some of us were shocked at how much, um, it wasn't spare time after we finished trying to work from home, but how much time we had in the evenings that we could use with our families, use in prayer, because we fill it up with other stuff. 
many of you, I'm not a very good self-examiner, but some people are really good at looking into, into their life. And I know I heard so many of you say to me how excited you were. You really looked at your families and you decided that these things were not making it back after COVID. They were not important. And so we need to take that time that we've been in hibernation to eliminate some waste and come back with just the important things in our hand and hold on to those things of value. So let's be like good little bears. And we can do that too. <laughs> I thought that was cute. So when we wake up from our hibernation, we're not on a go slow. We ask the Holy Spirit, what am I being positioned for today? What is in my life that's going to hinder me from doing that? What are you calling me to in this new season that I'm going to set a pace for in my life? And what is going to stop me being able to do that? Holy Spirit, show me what I am valuing in my life that is not actually of value. And then we've got to be disciplined enough to get rid of it so that we're positioned and ready for this new season. The second thing is that we need to prepare the soil. I'm going to read to you a scripture that many of you will know from Matthew 13. Um, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. It's a, it tells stories really well when it comes to the parables and the Proverbs. So let me read that to you. And it says this, Consider this. There was a farmer who went out to sow seeds, and as he cast a seed, some fell along, along the beaten path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell onto the gravel that had no topsoil. The seeds quickly shot up, but when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell amongst the thorns and the weeds, so that when the seeds sprouted, so did the weeds, crowding out the other plants, the good plants. But other seeds fell on good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as he planted. If you are able to do this, then you need to respond. Okay, let's just pause there. If you are able to do this, then you need to respond. So that's the Bible telling us, stop, listen to what I'm telling you, and if you can do it, you're going to need to respond. So that's our action point, right? Because we can do it. So now we need to do something about it. Now, are you ready to listen to the revelation of the parable of the sower and his seed? The seed that fell on the beaten path represents the, one, the heart of the one who hears the message of the kingdom realm but doesn't understand it. The adversary, that's the enemy, then comes and snatches away what was sown into his heart. The seed sown on gravel represents the person who gladly hears the kingdom message but his experience remains shallow. Shortly after he hears it, troubles and persecution come because of the kingdom message that he received. Then he quickly falls away, for the truth didn't sink deeply enough into his heart. The seed sown amongst the weeds represents the person who receives the message, but with all of life's busy distractions, his heart is divided. And his ambition for wealth resulting in suffocating the kingdom message and preventing him from bearing spiritual fruit. As for the seed that fell upon the good, rich soil, it represents the hearts of people who hear it and fully embrace the message of heaven's kingdom realm. Their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much as what was sown. Who are we in the story? We're the good soil. We're the good, rich soil. And if today you think, I don't know that I am. I don't think I am that good, rich soil. You've got two weeks to examine your heart and ask the Holy Spirit how to turn your soil into good, rich soil, ready to receive the seed. Because the farmer is coming on the 5th of July. He has the seed ready. Is the soil ready? We have an excellent farmer here. He's coming to sow a specific seed. He's carefully and prayerfully chosen the seed for this season. He's chosen the seed for the harvest he's believing for. He's going to bring the very best seed and plant it, believing that he's planting it into the very best conditions. Pastor Peter and Bev won't just come and throw any old seed at us. They will choose specifically what they need to plant on that day. And so they're coming with the express purpose of raising up a specific crop. They come with purpose. They come with intent. 
do we come to receive it with the same purpose and the same intent? Because we are that good soil. Is our heart ready? Are our eyes open? The winter season that has made some things bare and dormant, some things have died off and they've dropped away. And we don't want to be standing here at the end of this year clinging on to last year's bare branches. We need to drop the old branches. The soil represents the condition of the human heart. The quality, the health, the richness of the soil determines how fruitful the harvest will be. The soil can either receive the seed and produce a harvest of spiritual fruit, or it could be unprepared and produce nothing of value. I don't want to produce nothing of value. I want to take the seed that's sown into my life by Pastors Peter and Bev, and I want to multiply it beyond the farmer's wildest dreams. So I need to come prepared and ready. Every seed sown has the potential of fruit. Every seed sown. So the sower and the seed is ready. It needs to be sown into soil that can germinate it. Let's have a look at the four soils, all right? The first soil. That first little seed landed on the roadway and the birds ate it. It fell on hard, unprepared soil. It couldn't even get into the soil. So the seed sat there exposed and of course, quickly the birds of the air, the enemy came along and stole that seed away before it even had a chance. The soil was hardened and unwelcoming to the seed. You might be hurt, grieving, disappointed, angry. You might be harboring unforgiveness. It might be from something that's literally happened during the COVID lockdown season. It could be that new and that raw for you. Or it could be something that's been in your life for years, decades, and you've never been able to be healed of it. That will harden your heart and it will stop the seed being able to germinate within your heart. And I don't believe that that is the desire of anyone here. But what it does mean is that we need to say to the Holy Spirit, show me what's in my heart. Speak truth for me, speak the truth to me, Holy Spirit, and help me to uproot the things that have taken over and, and have made me hard in my heart so that that seed can't germinate. Now, that is not a pain free process. That is something that if you want to receive the vision and be able to germinate it in two weeks' time, you need to think today, what am I going to do and when am I going to do it in the next two weeks? Because two weeks will be gone like that. So when are you going to do it? When are you going to take time aside? When are you going to say to your husband or wife, I need to be out this night of the week because I'm going to take my Bible and sit in, the, in my car somewhere, anywhere away from the 12 children in our house and pray. What do you need to do to make it happen? Tell someone in your family what help you need to have some space where you can go and seek God and let Him do that work in your heart and you've got time to respond and see what the Holy Spirit is showing you. Ask Him to heal you, to soften your heart. Ready, come ready. This is our prep time. Come ready to Vision Sunday. Don't be robbed of receiving that seed on the day because your heart, your heart is not ready to, to receive it. The second lot of seed fell onto the gravel and so it got some coverage, but not a lot, not enough. The heat of the sun made it sprout, but it didn't have anywhere to put its proper roots. And so it withered away really quickly. That little seed, it got all excited and it tried. <laughs> and it even sprouted a little bit. It got pumped. It was, it was all hat and no cattle. It wanted to get going. It wanted to make something happen. And we could be all hyped up and leaping around, but if we've got no, nothing substantial to our character, then that little seed will go nowhere. And the outcome of that is that we actually can't do anything of lasting or of eternal value. It won't have an impact. The seed won't grow properly. And so if we really want to make a change, we really want to see our nation different, our families different, we have to learn how to properly grow the seed. So we want to come to Vision Sunday serious about hearing that word, all of us in unity, ready to take it, to let it germinate, not shallow on the day, but deeply caring about the word that's given to us. The third seed, it fell on the weeds, and so it did grow, but once it came up out of the ground, the weeds came up with it, and they strangled it. The seed hears the kingdom things, it hears the kingdom principles, it hears the kingdom promises, 
But then worry and delusion strangle those words that it heard, that it heard and nothing comes of it except stress and doubt. What is surrounding you? What is bringing you down? What is causing disbelief? When you've taken a seed and you've let it germinate in your heart and then it has come up and it's begun to grow and it's come up amongst the weeds, what are those weeds that are strangling the promises that God has given you? You know, the interesting thing about some weeds is that they have really pretty flowers. Who's seen those weeds? I can't tell them in my garden. That's my problem. So my dad's up there. He laughs at me. I'll say, oh, dad, that's such a nice thing there. That flower's beautiful because he helps me with everything outside. And, um, and he'll be like, oh, that's a weed. You need to get rid of it. So the, thing, the things we sometimes think look good are enhancing our life, looking pretty, are often a weed. And so we've got to be discerning. We've got to ask the Holy Spirit to show us what things am I holding on to that look like they're going to be a fruit. They look good, but actually it's a cunning plan of the enemy to distract me and to think that I'm all good and it's going to cut me off and strangle me before I hit the mark. So we need to ask God, what is in my life that I need to move aside and get rid of that is going to um, stop me doing what you've called me to do? And of course, the fourth seed, that's our great success story, right, church? The soil that that seed fell into, well, that soil is the champion of our story. That seed fell onto good earth, good, healthy soil. It produced a harvest beyond the farmer's wildest dreams. That soil took the seed in, it prepared it, it let it grow, and in due time, it sprouted. It grew carefully with stability and strength. It multiplied and it produced a multiplied fruitful harvest. Imagine church, if we all positioned ourselves to be able to do that with every single seed that was sown next week. All of us took a seed or a handful of seed and multiplied it in unity and in season. This is how we need to position ourselves for Vision Sunday. What work needs to be done in our life to soften and prepare that beautiful soil, to have nutrient rich soil, so that that seed will grow and grow and produce and produce. The condition of the soil that that when the seed lands in it determines the potential of the harvest. The condition of the soil when the seed lands in it determines the potential of the harvest. So what condition is our heart in? There are some things, some old lies that the enemy is bringing round and around and around to you, and it's time to get rid of those. There's some things that are holding us back, And there's some old things that we need to absolutely let go of before the new season. And our third thing we want to do, church, is we want to sharpen the arrowhead. Isaiah 49, 2 says, He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. He made me a polished arrow. And in his quiver he hid me away. Why did he hide you? Why did he make an arrow and then hide it away? So that it wouldn't be used? because it was so perfect and beautiful and ready and he wanted to hide it. No, he's protecting it in his quiver until the appointed moment for that arrow. A marksman will choose exactly the arrow he needs. It's like the guys at golf. You don't use the same thing. What's it called? Club. I don't know a lot about golf. Greg used to play golf, left his clubs behind my car. Yep, you know, I ran them over. So don't know a lot about golf in my life except the clubs, which I forgot the word of. You can't play without when your wife runs them over. So you choose a different club, right, guys and a couple of girls, depending on what you're aiming at. So the arrow that God is fashioning us into, it goes into his quiver. And at the appointed time, that perfectly, beautifully sharpened, precise arrow is pulled out and he draws back in that moment for exactly what he has for us. Now, figuratively, we've got lots to think about, like each of us is an arrow, right? But together, we are one sharp arrow. Imagine if each of us were beautifully, finely honed, and at whatever moment we like, we just shot ourselves off. There'd be arrows in all directions. I'm just doing my bit for Jesus. And we're (laughs) shooting off in all directions. No, (laughs) that wouldn't be effective. We need to hone ourselves in and be part of a vision together. But we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready, little arrows. Yeah. 
sharp. We don't want to be dull arrows that fall to the ground, that go through the air and are so dull they've got no speed and no force and they never reach the mark. And they fall to the ground and thud to the ground and have no cut in and no impact. We need to be sharp because we're going to go through the spiritual atmosphere, right church? And we're going to hit the target. We've got to be ready. We've got to be strong. We've got to be focused. We need to outwit and outlast the enemy. And so God is preparing us. You are prepared. We need to be in top condition. We need our aim straight, our vision clear. We need to be in sync with one another, in sync with the vision. We need to know our pace, know our direction, know our focus, and know our priorities. We want to pierce through that spiritual atmosphere, cut through, make progress, chart a course. Chart a course for those coming behind us. Chart a course for those in the community that don't know the power of the name of Jesus. Chart a course for your children and their children and their children and their children, as the song says. (laughs) We've got to be sharp and on form. And so we need to be in alignment and ready in our formation for our senior pastors to come. I know that everyone in this room would agree that we want to see God's kingdom established here on earth, yeah? Yes, we want to see a radical move of the Holy Spirit in our nation. Yes, we want to be part of a revival. We want to see people come to salvation. We want to see people healed. We want to see people delivered and set free. That's our desire. That's our heart. So what are we going to do to come prepared? Because it's not just Pastor Peter speaking on Vision Sunday who ushers those things in. This is our locker room time the next two weeks. Getting ready. We can't come running out onto the field on the day and start saying, oh, I haven't got a shoelace in one of my boots and I can't find my shin pads and I didn't bring a drink and, oh, I thought we were wearing the blue uniforms. You've all got the yellow uniforms. Not on the day, guys. Work it out now. Work it out now. We've got two weeks of locker room time. I'm looking at the cricket coach there. He can tell me what we do in a locker room, right, to get ready. You don't just show up on the day, do we? No, you wouldn't be impressed, would we? Would you? No, cricket coach. She said, no, don't send the boys just on the day. So what are we going to do, church? Because when Pastor Peter comes and brings that word, we want to be ready, feet positioned on the front, on the start line, poised, positioned, ready to go, actually fit, actually strong, warmed up, not warming up on the day. So in this two weeks, what are you going to do? What am I going to do to prepare What of these things that I've mentioned this morning, it might be one thing I've said to you that you remember when you leave this morning. One thing that sticks in your heart and you think, yeah, that's me. I've got to sort that out. Might be five things. Make a time, make a commitment in the next few weeks. It'd be like having like a sprain or an injured muscle and thinking I'll sort it out on the field. You wouldn't do that. You would have to go and get it sorted before you get to the field, ready for the day. So what of the things I've mentioned or other things that the Holy Spirit might quicken to you? I've only mentioned a few things. Ask the Holy Spirit, out of what Christ has said, God, show me or show me something else that I can do to be ready to receive that word. We don't ever want to be familiar, like, oh, yeah, Vision Sunday, that's cool, Pastor Peter, whatever you say. Yep, cool. We can't be like that, church. We've got to be hungry for it. And it doesn't even really matter what he asks us to have as our vision. The point is, are we ready to take it and run with it? Because that's where the impact and the power comes. And so the vision, it's not Pastor Peter's vision. It's ours. And he's bringing it to us. He's delivering it to us. It's ours to run with. It's ours to execute. It's ours to instigate. And it's ours to bring to fruition.